Thank you for watching this video on IBM SPSS Modeler 17. In this video we're going to go through a, uh, a tutorial on how to build a credit scoring model using IBM SPSS. So the first thing we need to do is go into our start menu and open up the program. IBM SPSS Modeler 17, IBM SPSS Modeler 17. Let this come up. As this comes up, we're going to be presented with the, uh, the welcome screen here, which tells us, it gives us an option to open one of the demo streams or an existing stream that could be working on or, or an exist, existing project. So for today's demo, we're just going to use the, one, of the demo, one of the demos that is here, the introduction to modeling. So I select that one, I click OK. It already creates a canvas for me and puts three simple, actually five simple objects on here. These two we're not going to use, so we're going to remove them straight away. We're only going to focus on the starting with these three here. They're very simple objects. The first one is a, a file reference. So in this case, it's referencing the treecredit.sav file. That's a source. We'll go through the tabs in just a moment. Uh, type is a um, uh, a field operation we can do, and then the credit rating piece. This is actually a model that we, we create. So a quick view of what we have here in SPSS Modeler. We have our menus along the top, uh, a whole bunch of options for uh, various features. I'm, I'm not going to go into all of them right now, uh, just to give you a quick view of what's here. And then our toolbar, representing some of those features, most commonly used features. It's important to look at the, the streams, output, and models tabs that you have for the project. And then references to the CRISP DM uh, modeling approach here. So rather, you don't you can add whatever you want into these folders on as part of the project. It can be Word files or PowerPoint or images. Uh, the idea here is to keep everything as part of the same project. It doesn't necessarily need to be just code. And moving over to really code pieces, these are the tabs that you'll see along the bottom. Uh, favorites are very commonly used objects, but they do group into na nice areas, and they also have the the shape of the image to indicate what really is the, the type of object. So uh, anything that's a circle is a source. Uh, analytic service, this is a new feature you can connect right into a, right into various analytic pieces. And more specifically, there's an, an object uh, specifically for TM1. So if you have TM1 cubes that are already available, you can uh, you can source that directly from, uh, into this uh, in, in any one of these streams here. Once we've got our sources, we can do record operations. That's the the, the six-sided figure here. We can select, do select operations, sample, sorting, balance, distinct, aggregate, merging, and append. You maybe you have a couple different sources that you want to merge data, uh, bring together all of your customer information into into one one record, so uh, you can use everything you know about the customer to get the best view of the customer. More, these are field ops, so these represent really, I guess, column filtering you could be doing, reclassifying, anomaly, there's, there's a lot of good stuff in here as well. Graphs are the triangles, these are quite handy for when you're trying to decide what's the right approach, what are the right measure, what are the right items to be using within your model. You can get a graphical representation of, of what's available. And this is what it's all about, this is the modeling. So there's a, a ton of models available. I think the two very common ones are the Chade model and the auto classifier. Those are very, very handy. But it, it very much depends on what kind of analysis you're doing, what kind of prediction you want, and uh, maybe you want a combination of these, these models that are out there. Uh, there's These ones here are database, uh, these are really relational models you can work with. Uh, the outputs, these are the squares. Very typic typically, you're going to be using a table for most of the development, but uh, there's other op options here to, to use. And exporting out. So I mentioned TM1 before, you can also export right back to TM1 as well, as well as Cognos BI, SAS, uh, XML, and flat file or a database or an analytics server. Now, some that are specific for IBM SPSS statistics. So we can do some more higher end, uh, more complex statistical modeling, and also for text analytics. So these are the ones for text analytics. But coming back to our, our simple example here, we've got a file here, 
take a look at what's in here. Open, I double click on tree underscore credit dot SAV and I look at the contents of the object. I can click on my preview button here to get a, a view into what's in this file. So this file is laid out quite nicely. I've got my credit rating, which is the first column. That's what we're going to be trying to figure out. And what we know about the customers, we know their age, income level, number of credit cards, their education, and number and car loans. Now notice here that these are not necessarily continuous. These are set up as discrete. So here, five or more. I can make these, these are already made into categories. I could use the, the type uh, item to do this for me. In this case, it's already part of the data. So I click OK on that. File looks fine. I'm going to look at my type item here. This gives me uh, how these things are going to be measured. So I can see my credit rating is nominal, meaning it has certain specific values. Age is continuous, really a number. Uh, ordinal and nominal are different items here. And more importantly is the role. So what we're trying to figure out is our credit rating. Uh, these other item, items are just input. There's other types you could use. Something could be both an input and a target. It could be a none, which would be ignored. Partition, split, frequency, record ID. Record ID is an important one. A lot of your data may have a record ID uh, in, the, in there to maybe join data sources together or uniquely identify one, uh, one record. And you may want to, uh, you want to avoid having that as part of your, uh, your model because it doesn't really predict anything. It's not, there's no inherent value in that. Uh, what are the format annotations if I want to add them? I can preview this here. I'm seeing the same data I'm looking at before. Nothing's really changed on the preview. And then here we've used the Chade model. Again, that's the one down here. When I double click it, it's going to open it up and say, here are the fields that we're using. It's already set up nicely. Now that doesn't necessarily you, if you're doing this on your own, you will need to select which ones are your predictors and which one is your target. Um, the type Using a type item here should make that a lot easier. It might be able to, I think it does predict, it does fill that out quite nicely. There's other build options in here I can play with if I want to. I'm going to leave it all as, as defaults for now. And I'm going to move this over to the right hand side because there's something, when I run, when I run this, something does change. I click run. I see now I've created a nugget. A nugget represents the model as the as how it would be used for prediction. So if I double click this new object that was created, I can see some detail into the predictor pieces. So it looks like income level is really the major predictor. Number of credit cards and age are not as strong a predictor. If I click on my viewer, I get a very nice tree and Chade is really generating a, uh, a tree structure for me. So starting with credit rating, uh, I can see my relationship between good and bad and, uh, and the, the prediction values here. So that's all very good to know when developing the model. For the time being, we need, all we really need to know is that income level is, is our strongest predictor. So what would we do now? So now I want to add in, I want to send my production data through here. So I'm going to add a new source. In my case, it's an Excel file. I'll find my Excel object, double click that. Now note, I don't need to use the same types here. For my model generation, I'm using a, a .sav file because I've got some statistics that I want to use. Uh, when I'm, I could connect this to T1 data or, or CSV or a database or whatever, whatever I want to. It doesn't need to be the same. I'm going to my Excel file. I'm going to now select. I'm going to go into my demos folder. I'm going to select my tree credit data. That's a file that's already been set up. But let's take a look at it just to make sure what we're, what we know what we're looking at. Click preview. Now this is a preview and this is just a standard Excel file. It's an XLSX file. But notice it's got the same columns, and this is by design. I've, you know, it's I've wrote in that's got the same columns. It does not have the the credit rating here, and that's on purpose because in production data we don't know what the credit credit rating is. We're using this tool to predict our credit rating. 
So we have only the items that are inputs in here now. Just make sure, yeah, it sees all the fields in there. It's going to make its own de definitions around measurement, which is fine. You could, can, you could match these to the type or use a type item. It's probably the best practice to do that, but for simplicity, we'll just keep on going. A very common thing to do is try to connect this production data to my existing nugget right here. And when I do that, it's going to say, nope, there's already a connection there. You can't do that. That's very purposeful that you need to copy that nugget. You can paste it on, this, on the very same stream or in a different stream, but you cannot reuse the same nugget. So I have to copy and paste my nugget. Now, I should be able to connect to this one. Yep, that worked fine. And I'm also going to, I want to see what the data looks like as an output. So I'm going to go into my output palette. Since I already have credit rating uh, selected, when I double click on, on table, it'll automatically add the table output to my, uh, my selected object. Now when I click run, it's going to use that model to generate. So this is the input in the file. It generates a, a credit rating and a credit rating score. So we're done. I know I could copy and paste this or you know send this file somewhere else if I choose to. But at this point, we have created our model. We've used the model against production data, and we've created our output. So that's a one quick way of creating a scoring model within IBM SPSS Modeler version 17. Thank you for watching.